Five Investigates uncovers how one shoplifter is single-handedly cutting into the bottom lines of Minnesota's biggest retailers. And as everyone gets ready to hit the stores on Black Friday, he is still out there. Investigative reporter Eric Rasmussen is here with some eye-popping security videos revealing how that one man helped himself to thousands of dollars worth of merchandise over and over again. He did. You may not know his name, but Best Buy and Target certainly do. Police reports and court records show Angelo Wagner Jr. has hit at least 26 stores, often working alone, and he's exactly the kind of guy retailers and detectives are most concerned about. It is these groups of people coming in. You have two people, five people. Flash mobs grab the headlines, hitting three Best Buy stores in Maplewood, Burnsville, and Blaine, all on Black Friday in 2021. A wave of organized retail crime sweeping Minnesota and the nation. They are becoming more and more organized because it's profitable. But out of the spotlight, investigators say this man is quietly doing the most damage, month after month, store after store. If I give you a name, Angelo Wagner, you heard that one? Yes, I have. Angelo Maurice Wagner Jr., to be exact. Wagner's name kept popping up when five investigates analyzed more than two years of police reports from 30 Target and Best Buy stores around the Twin Cities. That's him at Target in West St. Paul. Look closely. Police say he used something to cut the cords off of those iPhones that were tethered to the display case. Investigators say Wagner teamed up with the woman in green at this Best Buy in Oakdale, taking laptops with an employee standing right next to them. We can't hear what was said, but it was not enough to stop them from strolling out the front door. Eventually it'll impact us because Best Buy might have Let's just say $50,000 in losses. Well, someone has to make up that amount somehow. Egan Detective Dan Spees worked a case involving Wagner in 2021. He figured out a, a specific way to do it. He goes in, steals a TV or the phones or the radios or whatever they are. Um, and then a couple days later, he does again. As an employee walks out of a locked stockroom door, security cameras at Target and Lakeville record Wagner walking in. Out of public view, but still on camera. He then helped himself to a variety of products off the shelves, including a PlayStation 5, all before making another casual getaway. A sheriff's report from Ramsey County reveals Target blamed Wagner alone for an approximate loss of more than $125,000. Target says it is closing nine stores in four states because of theft and organized retail crime. Target store closures earlier this year did not directly impact Minnesota, but the Minneapolis-based company tells Five Investigates it is investing in more security across the board, from third-party guard services to locking cases for merchandise prone to theft. Is there more that these companies can be doing? Yeah, there's absolutely a lot that they can be doing. Landon Winklevoss is a cybersecurity expert with Nisos, working behind the scenes to help companies identify potential threats and criminals, often organizing online. The people that are doing the, the stealing are different than the people that are monetizing and even different than the people that are laundering the proceeds. And it's not just electronics. You have your fragrances um, and clothing. Shoes is a big one these days. $13,000 worth of sneakers. Last year, Five Eyewitness News told the story of shop owner Walter Dillon forced to close after thieves hit his store in Little Canada five times. I don't believe the uh, punishment is harsh enough. Dylan's testimony at the state capitol helped pass a new organized retail theft bill, adding greater consequences for those working in groups, as well as individuals who have engaged in a pattern of retail theft. Because they put me out of business, but they still going on. They still thriving. Despite viral videos of flash mobs across the country, a new study of shoplifting trends by the Council on Criminal Justice found more than 95% of cases involve just one or two offenders, just like Angelo Wagner Jr. Remember him cutting off those iPhones at Target? Well, Wagner was bold enough to return to this same location here in West St. Paul four months later, but this time they alerted the police who came and arrested him. A judge sentenced Wagner to 20 months in prison early last year, 
but now he's out again, and we found he's racking up new charges. We wanted to speak with him. Wagner, there he is. But Wagner was a no-show for three court dates this month, and he now has a warrant out for his arrest. You're going to have some people shaking their fists saying, why isn't this guy, you know, locked under the jail? What's the solution here? Typically, you're right. With property crime, they typically do not go um, to jail or prison for a very long time. We don't know yet whether the new legislation will deter repeat offenders such as Wagner. For now, Detective Spee says he's counting on collaboration with other agencies, combining cases across the metro to finally make an impact. Yeah, that's what I hang my hat on, knowing that even though for my specific case, they might not have a lot of repercussions or even go to jail or prison, but eventually down the road, if they continue down this path, they most likely will. We asked Target and Best Buy to sit down with us for interviews, but we're still waiting. Target says it is working with community groups as well as local and federal government officials to try to crack down on this kind of theft. A little bit of good news here. That new study we mentioned did find that shoplifting overall has gone down in Minneapolis and St. Paul this year after a spike in cases last year. That's, uh, that's good news, but the brazenness of the people committing this crime is just unbelievable. There's a lot of work for police, the stores, yeah. everyone to do. Okay, Eric Rasmussen, very interesting. Thank you very much.